Kale and I are coffee nuts. So when we saw the sampler on Amazon for 30 plus flavors in a hundred pack of coffee pods, we are like, we gotta try that. And we've been working through the flavors, so it's like an adventure every time you make a cup of coffee, which is awesome. <laughs> So far, everything that I've tried has been delicious. I have a link to them down below if you are a coffee enthusiast yourself. Highly recommend. But today is a more casual video. I have a lot to do today, so I thought I would take you guys along with me. I've tried to do these types of videos before, but I just end up talking too much. I've learned my lesson. I'm going to try to show rather than tell and hopefully be able to fit everything in one video that's not over an hour long. The things that I need to get done today. I need to make a batch of bath bears. I need to unbox a package for you guys. Editing Jerrica here. I am so sorry I didn't even mention this, but it's a huge part of this video. I am also making and pouring some soap. So I'm sorry I didn't mention it here. I don't know why, but let's continue with the video because that is indeed what I'm also going to be doing today. It's actually the priority today. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> All of that is happening in this vlog and I'm going to try to make it as entertaining as possible for you guys. If you want to know what a small business owner who works out of her home does in which she is the only employee, then keep watching. This is the video for you. I took the dogs out this morning and it was freezing, freezing cold. And my dogs, when they're out in the cold for too long, they get, we call it cold potch because they start to lift up their paws. I've tried getting boots for them and they just kick it off. They hate it or they walk very awkwardly with it so they don't like the boots. So what we've been doing instead is just trying to keep them out there for as short of a time as possible. And they both get really cold paws this time of year. But hopefully the weather warms up soon. My security system in my house currently says it's a high of 13 and I don't believe them. I don't. It's way, way too cold. This is not accurate guys. Yeah, that that is totally wrong. Negative 18 right now here in Calgary. Negative 18. So I'm not sure what's going on with that system. Something must be broken. I don't know. The first thing I've got to do is to get the lye and water going so that they can cool down. They take about two hours to cool down. I don't master batch my lye. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, head down to the studio. And then as that's cooling, tackle the other things on my to-do list. I think it's doing that thing that it does when it gets super cold and the water, I guess, freezes over there. Kale said he turned off the water. Not sure what, exactly what's going on, but this happened last year as well. <sighs> Gotta keep going. <laughs> so the lye and water solution are going to be cooling down for a couple of hours. And in the meantime, I'm going to work on the other things on my to-do list. Starting with that package. So it's right over here. Kale and I got these inflatable Christmas decorations. One is a six foot Santa. Yep, six feet. And Kale wanted the 12 foot one. So this is this was a compromise. And we have a six foot snowman. We need to assemble and set this up maybe this weekend. I don't know. I'm really excited about them. This is the first time we have these fun, giant inflatable things. Right away, I think these are molds here. And this looks like a soap mold. Ooh. So this is the haul. Let's start with the colorants. I've got some micas from Fizz Fairy. We've got two shades of orange. We have orange sherbet mica and O oh pumpkin mica. Beautiful. We have more yellow submarine mica. This is my favorite yellow mica. It turns whatever you put this in so yellow. And I'm so blurry right now. Next we have some sparkle pearl mica. And that is a great mica to have for this time of year for all things snowy and Christmassy. 
Next we have Superstar Gold Floor Flago Pite Shimmer Mica. For those who watched my Jelly Soap video, I'll link it up here. I used some Floor Flago Pite Shimmer Mica from Mad Micas in that video. I didn't have any from Fizz Fairy, so I can't wait to try this out. This is what makes water shimmer the way it does. So this is awesome. Next. We got some fragrance oils. We have three two ounce fragrances. Snow day, flannel, tis the season. When you were younger, weren't snow days the absolute best? I grew up in Southern Ontario, so snow days happened a lot. It was awesome because not only did you get to stay home from school, but you also got to play in the snow. I don't know what that would smell like though. <laughs> flannel, I love flannel, flannel hard to really predict what this is gonna smell like. I kind of picture lumberjacks or, you know, that plaid kind of look. But I, again, I don't know what that would smell like. And then tis the season. And then we have a big bottle here, eight ounces of cinnamon pine cone, which I think Kale's gonna be excited about because he loves pine cone. Let's get these guys a bit of a sniff. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay, cinnamon pine cone smells amazing. So that's top of cinnamon, a middle of pine, and a bottom of cedar and juniper berries. Let's see here. Soap. You can use up to 5%. I might just be making a soap with this. There is vanilla in it. Not sure how dark it's going to get because it doesn't smell too strongly of vanilla. We'll see. Tis the season. Oh, this one has a very berry scent to it. Top is a fruity, middle is cinnamon and clove, bottom in and the bottom is vanilla. You definitely smell the cloves and vanilla. It's like berry and cloves together. It's kind of like Glog. For those Ikea fans out there, Glog is the mulled wine. It's not really wine, I don't think it's alcoholic, but it's that stuff that you put into a crock pot and then you throw cloves in it and then maybe orange slices in it and you serve it at a Christmas party. That's what it kind of smells like. It's a good smell, I like it. Definitely smells like Christmas. Flannel, okay, I'm super curious about this one. Oh, okay. Flannel smells very clean, like laundry, like fresh, fresh laundry. Wow, I like this a lot. Top of bergamot, a middle of mahogany, and a bottom of musk. I'm only now picking up that citrus tone, but it's a blend I've never smelled before, but I really like it. It's very, very clean smelling. And last snow day, right now in Calgary, we just got dumped on with snow, like lots and lots of snow. So this scent, is perfect for right now. <laughs> mm. Okay, there's peppermint in this, like a peppermint candy. Let's see here. A top of spruce, a middle of peppermint. I called it. <laughs> a bottom of vanilla, green, and musk. I think the two faves for me, they all smell really good. I like all of them, but the two standouts for me is Snow Day, Cinnamon Pine Cone. They are the two Christmas scents that I think if I put them in stuff, they would sell right away. So now I have to think about what I wanna do with these. I think this might be a soap, this guy right here. And this one might be bath bombs, we'll see. Woohoo, fragrance oils. Up next, we've got some molds. We've got two 3D hand press molds. I suspect this one is a snow globe, it is the snow globe shape, and it is. It's a snow globe. How fun is this kind of mold? I think this is gonna do really, really well at the last market Kale and I are gonna be doing this weekend. So I'll probably make a bunch of Christmas bath bombs and see how they do. But this is perfect. This looks like some sort of coffee cup or a coffin. We'll see. It's a coffee cup. <laughs> right now, mint coffees are probably all the rage or like peppermint stick type of drinks. Are you guys Starbucks fans? I enjoy Starbucks, but it's not one of those things where I need to have a Starbucks. And there are people out there that need to have their Starbucks on the daily, like every day. And not just, you know, their Pike roast plain coffee. They need to have like the fanciest coffee in the biggest size. And it's like an $8 coffee every day, but they feel like that's a necessary part of their day. I'm not a huge Starbucks fanatic like that, but I do like, I do like the occasional Starbucks drink. My go-to is the caramel macchiato. A caramel macchiato scented bath bomb in this shape would do really well, I think. <laughs> Next are some vacuum molds, which I think these guys are some of the cutest I've ever seen before. <laughs> so here is Santa Claus and here is Mrs. Claus. <laughs> They're so cute. They're so happy to see me. And then we have an equally adorable snowman 
vacuum mold. I've used their Halloween themed vacuum molds and all of them pressed beautifully. So I'm pretty sure these are gonna do just as well. They're really thin, like, do you see how thin this one is? So the bath bombs that they're gonna make are gonna be quite small, I think. Maybe two to three ounces. You probably wouldn't be able to fit a secret color in there, but, but the draw is mainly the face. These guys are so, so cute. Next, I'm insanely excited about because I've been wanting these for a while and I finally have them. Woohoo! So these are soap embed column molds and you could use these for melt and pour or cold process soap. But the soap that comes out of these guys, you can put into your other loaves of soap to make really cool shapes. So this is their star shape. I don't know if that's showing up nicely, but this is their star shape. And I also have their moon shape. I have a really fun concept for soap and these two molds are going to help bring that concept to life. I'm really, really excited. I don't really work too much with column molds, but excited to get these two. These next two things I'm so excited about because I'm all about making something as quick and easy as possible. We've got two soap bases. The first one is African black soap. So Fissary doesn't just make things for bath bombs, they make tons of stuff for soap making as well. I showed you those silicone column molds. They also have melt and pour bases on their website. African black soap as a base is very, very intriguing. This is such a popular item and whenever Kayla and I are vending in person, it's probably one of those things that we get asked about a lot is if we have African black soap and I haven't ever attempted to make it before. It looks kind of like a difficult complicated process, which is why I haven't tried it. But a base like this, you can just, do you, can you melt it? Let's see. Mm. Yes. So this is melt and pour soap. You can melt this down, add whatever fragrance you want to it. And there you go. You have African black soap to sell at markets or on your website. And that is pretty cool. Not only am I super excited about getting this guy, but we also got jelly soap base. <laughs> I just made jelly soap from scratch. And even though that was tons and tons of fun to do, having a ready-made base to make jelly soap is even better. Because at the end of the day, when you have a business and you're trying to get a million things done, having to go through all the steps that I went through to make my jelly soap, if I can cut that down by even a little bit, that's awesome. For this base, I think it's the same as the other melt and pour base. You melt it, add your fragrance, and then pour, and you're good to go. But I'll need to look that up on their website to get the exact instructions. But this is so exciting. I'm so excited. I kind of hear it like wiggling in there. Can you hear it wiggling? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Super excited about this stuff. Watch me make a ton of stuff with this in the next couple of videos. Kill and I put our tree up. We had to buy a new one because we left our old one in Midland. There are no ornaments on it yet, but that's coming up this weekend. Jiggy's been appreciating the tree. Lunch break. This was last night's dinner, which was just basically shrimp and broccoli, stir fried in oil. And I'm gonna have a side of seaweed. I get this from Costco. And then I'm gonna add this salmon, which is like, poke bowl salmon apparently to the other side if I can get it out I might need two hands for this oh nope it's coming out got it and this is also from Costco on sale so I'm just gonna try it out because I love a good poke bowl and then I have this rice seasoning I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on top should have put over the rice but oh well and there you go that's my lunch yum 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 I spend my lunch breaks watching Lost, and I've never watched Lost before, it's my first time, and I never understood the hype back then, but now I do. This poke salmon is delicious. Good. Look at these two flirting. <laughs> we are back in the studio because I'm done with my lunch break, and we are now going to be melting my heart oils and butters to go and soap with them. That's what I'm gonna be doing right now. For oils and butters in my soap, I use coconut oil, I use palm oil and I use shea butter. From the beginning of my soap journey, I've always used ultra-refined 
shea butter that I would get from New Directions Aromatics. They sold them in those 25 kilo cases. And one of the benefits about living in Ontario was that I was within a couple hours drive of New Directions Aromatics. So even with inflation, I was still saving money because I was able to go and pick that shea butter up from the warehouse instead of having it shipped when I went and did my other errands around the greater Toronto area. But since I moved here to Calgary, Alberta, I can't get my shea butter from New Directions Aromatics anymore because if I buy from there, I'm going to have to ship them to here and shipping is just so expensive right now. So I decided to shop around for different shea butters and I decided to purchase my shea butter from Baraka Shea Butter. They sourced their shea butter from Ghana and with my order came these profiles of some of their workers so you know exactly who made your shea butter and I think that's incredible. Their whole company is about your impact when you purchase from them and how you're helping women from Ghana that make the shea butter and they profile real people and families that you are helping by purchasing their shea butter. It's so heartwarming. All of these cards came with the shea butter that I bought and this is not sponsored by them. They didn't send me their shea butter. I bought from them and I decided to go with a non-refined shea butter. And yes, it is yellow. And yes, there is a scent that comes through when you use this shea butter, but it's not unpleasant to me. So that is the shea butter that I'm going to be using in the soap today. So here is that shea butter and look how soft it is. I'm barely pressing down and it is just cutting right into this and because it's not refined when you melt it down you might find a few impurities but you have a lot more of the shea plant in this butter which means you get more good stuff on the skin whereas anything refined it's been processed i absolutely love the shea butter and the products that we have made using the shea butter feel so nice and creamy Try them out. I have a link to them below. I'm not an affiliate. This is not a sponsored post. Just I'm a huge fan of this company and, and what they stand for and their product is amazing too. So these are all my heart oils and butters in this Presto pot. I got to plug it in. Thank you to everybody who warned me from my last video not to use an extension cord. I knew that, but I don't know for some reason I just forgot. So I'm definitely plugging this into the wall here. You want to use these guys without extension cords. Plug it right into a source. And um, yeah, thank you again. You probably saved me from burning my house down. Turn this to warm and that melts these guys so, so fast. Thank you for making my shea butter. It's lovely. So I've poured my liquid oils in their buckets. And in here there's olive oil, hemp seed oil, and castor oil. And my hard oils and butters are almost melted. This is like 10 minutes, guys. So fast. And once it's ready to go, I will dispense it through the spout and add it to those buckets. So my shea butter is ready. I'm just going to turn this tap to open. And it comes out all melted just like that. So all their oils are ready, but if I were to take the temperature of these, they are still way too hot. I like to soap when both my lye water, over there in the corner, it's blurry, but when both my lye water and my oils are below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If I were to soap with this right now, it would probably be okay, but I might end up with cracking at the top of my soap. And so that's why I like to soap much cooler. So we're gonna wait for these guys to cool down. We are now at my office and the reason why we're here is while the oils are melting down, I'm going to go see if I can find some more lye because we are running dangerously low. I don't think I even have enough to make another five pound batch. So right now I'm going to look up how much it is on Windy Point. That's my go-to because they're literally maybe 15 minutes from my house, which is awesome. So for a 25 kilo bag, 70 bucks. That's pretty good. So I think I'm gonna buy, I should get, I should get two. I think I'm gonna get two. It's a pretty good price. I remember the days where I would buy 25 kilo bags at around $60 um, from a chemical supply place in Ontario. And I might look for more places like that here in Calgary if you guys have any suggestions. 
let me know, but it's a pretty decent price. <laughs> so these items are what's in my cart right now. I'm gonna grab some of these silicone molds because I have that jelly soap and I thought these would be fun to use as the molds for them. And here's my sodium hydroxide. I'm getting two, $140. So I'm going to agree, I'm gonna check out. So it's been an hour or so and we are doing great. This is a good temp for soaping. So at this point, we are ready to move along. The first soap I'm going to pour is a custom soap that I'm making for one of my wholesale customers. And this is my very first wholesale customer that I ever had. And he's still a wholesale customer four years later, and he's awesome. His mother unfortunately passed away and, and he wanted all the proceeds of this soap to go to a charity that was special to his mother. So that's what we're making first and it's gonna be a purple soap, a beautiful purple and lavender soap. We're gonna be using luscious lilac mica and purple rain mica with a gorgeous white swirl. You'll see how it all comes together. And for the fragrance, we're gonna be using gardener's gloves from Fizz Fairy. And I've been using this in a lot of things lately because it's currently my favorite fragrance oil. And I've made a few soaps with this and it soaps beautifully, which you will see. I'm gonna move really fast here, making the soaps, pouring them, not really talking too much. So I hope you enjoy this quick montage of this pour and I'll come back once everything is done.
So these are the three soaps that I made all poured and everything looks neat and clean but through the magic of vlogging I didn't show you all the water that I spilled everywhere. Twice. But it happens. That's real life. That's what happens. Sometimes things spill and of all the things that I could spill in this soaping career, water is probably the best thing. Yep. And this place needed a good mop. I'll clean it up for you. Kale helped me clean my mess. But here is the result. I was gonna do bath bears, but it's already dark and I'm tired and I think we're gonna move that to tomorrow. And I might do a continuation of this day in my life and do tomorrow because I still have a full list of things to do tomorrow. I still have to do soap labels for that wholesale order. And we have a few orders to get out the door, so. And I'm thinking maybe that's what Vlogmas is gonna be moving forward instead of how-tos. I'll pepper the how-tos with my everyday day in my life stuff. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that. <laughs> Which one of these do you like the best? This is, this well, is. I don't know what this one looks like, but this looks like it's gonna look the best I think <laughs> I think the regular yeah like more color than the French lavender soap yeah like is gonna look really cool so I'm excited I'm, to see that I'm trying to the sparkly ones I like the sparkly the peach one yep. is amazing and the crowd favorite the raspberry vanilla will always have a near and dear place in my heart yep. and for those wondering these molds are Winston and Walter molds I love them. They're the only soap molds I use for my business for my tall and skinny soaps. So that's it. I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thank you so much to Fisberry for sending me that package. I'm really, really super excited, super excited to show you guys what I do with all the stuff that came in that package. You guys want recipes to these soaps? This soap over here, this lilac lavender soap, the peach soap, and the raspberry vanilla soap. That's gonna be on my Patreon. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons. Everyone who has chosen to support us on there, you guys are the best, especially my bubble BFFs listed right here on the screen. Your comments and your stories are so touching and your feedback is so valuable to me. So thank you so much. If you wanna check out the Patreon, that is also linked down below. So that is it. I'm tired. Thank you so much for watching till the very end and until the next one, keep smiling, keep being awesome and keep making amazing, beautiful things like cold processed soap. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>